Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today is an absolute first for us. We're doing a camper revival and then immediately taking it to Kansas City Speedway for a NASCAR race. Let's begin. So right away, thank you guys for tuning in to this excellent episode of Junkyard Digs. Like I mentioned, we're gonna get this camper running. It's been sitting for a few years. We don't actually know how long. Uh, it's rusty, it's ugly. It's a 77 Ford with a 460 and a four barrel. We know absolutely nothing about it. We haven't even been inside yet. So uh, let's start things off by exploring this and seeing how much work we have to do. Man, is it cold out today. I thought it was like the end of April, not January. Well, we have an awning. That's good. Oh, hang on. We have. The awning is coming offing. <laughs> apparently. Dude, it's I fixed it. Freaking fix. This is a this is a leprechaun. I wonder if it'll bring us any luck. Could have been a crackhead. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my. Oh boy. Oh wasps. Good. Oh boy. Starting things out right. Get him! Die! World star! <laughs> I tell oh. you what, dude, it's cozy in here. I am it's, not a tall person, but the ceiling is right there. I am a tall person, and it's it's right there. <laughs> the smell, the smell is it's actually not, not bad. that bad. It's not that bad. It looks bigger in the pictures they sent. Oh boy, we're taking six people right now. Oh, we can fit six in this. Thing. I see it comfortably sleeps too, unless you're a little more comfortable with the two you're sleeping with. The Chevy and Mopar air fresheners hanging off the AC. It's not a revival without uh, mouse turds, and we've got plenty of those, it looks like. It says the generator has zero hours on it. I don't think that's accurate, but you never know. Oh, it comes with Rock Auto stickers already. Hell yeah, and a microwave. I just want to point out for a small camper, I don't know how long this is, definitely shorter than a limo, for a small camper, this has everything. It's got AC, heat, a stove, a stove like hood, a microwave, a sink, tons of cabinets. Uh, I'm assuming this back here is a bathroom. Oh hell, we got a tub, another no sink, and a tub. Dude, this is like a legit bathroom, not just a camper one. Look at well, us. Hey, it's us. Hey! Wait, hold on. I'm going to see wait. if my bed is going to be... Oh, it's filled right now, it's but... It's occupied. This gets in with all the stuff. This is perfect. Just give me a f few beers and I'll be out like a, like a light. You got a little bit of water damage on the ceiling. But that's fine. Ah. We'll, I mean, will it make it four, four and a half hours oh, yeah, south? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, no doubt about that. Another quality product by Coachman. It's pretty like cozy in here, actually. It's better than I anticipated. Frickin so it. The woodwork in this is better than the limo. Ooh, that's a lot of water Ooh. damage in there. Yeah, just close that back up. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Well, actually, you can see. Right oh, it's here. been repaired. Yeah. It's fine, guys. Oh shit! Whoa. We got power. Whoa! What? This thing's got a battery in it. Where? Probably. Oh my in, god! Probably in the engine bay. <laughs> so wait, would it just like start up? Potentially. We got a tack, a vacuum gauge, a voltmeter, oil, fuel, charge. Where's the keys? Temp. Ain't none. We'll have to ask the owner for them. Oh shit, she's got cruise potentially. It's got all the bells and whistles. Does it feel like it have, has brakes? No. <laughs> nah, you don't need there's, brakes. There's no brakes. So that's what we're gonna be doing today, is fix some brakes. Great. A light. Some fuses. Casey's matches. I'm gonna go grab the keys from the guy. All right, he should be dead now. Oh shit, we have a ladder? Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff up here. I see an American flag up there. And sleeping bags? And sleeping bags. There's already one laid out, you know? And this is like the good sleeping bag. When it has like the nice like hunting scenes on the inside, you know it's from the 70s and it's just great quality. Just fantastic quality. And they're super warm, not gonna lie. Have like two of them like that. I really like our super size. Yeah, yeah, Little. it's gonna work perfectly considering you can see how aged it is by the plastic on top. Honestly, you'd probably be better off 
throwing it at the fire and waiting for it to explode and like hopefully it puts it out then. You might have a little shrapnel coming your way, but you just duck, 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 dip, dodge, and do dive, you know, dodgeball. I think you know it's just die. You just die. Or you just die. That too. Either or. Looking for keys. We got like 1,200 sun visors. Oh, here we go. We got, ooh, we have a carb rebuild kit with power valves in it and a brand new accelerator pump gasket. So like the three things we need to replace oh, perfect. are right here in my hand. Everything but those potentially got done. Oh, hey, <laughs> Leprechaun, our luck's beginning to turn around. Oh now only God. if we can find the goddamn keys. <laughs> I got luck. Oh, you found them? Oh, no. Over there on the left side. Those are the ones. Oh, oh she even cranks. All righty. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, sir. I don't know what else is on here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we've gone through and explored it. We've decided it's a piece of crap and it, uh, we want it. Leaks like crazy. Missing a generator. Blah, blah, blah. It's wasp infect, like infested. There's a wasp. There's a wasp. Are they alive? Yeah. Yep. Those are alive. It's okay. We brought brake clean. I'll take care of them. <laughs> We have six days to be in the infield of Kansas City Speedway at the Bushy McBush race. The Bush Light race. Let's see if we can get this thing running and let's see if we can make it stop and drive. Hopefully by the end we can be sponsored by Bush Light because, you know, we, we this, buy a lot and consume a lot of Bush Light. This is an expensive video too. The camper is $1,500 and the tickets were $1,300. Let's see if it, uh, if it comes to life even at all. Oh. We got lights. We got a brake light and a fast and seat belts, which are both like standard test lights. I'll give her a couple pumpies here. See what happens. It's only been sitting two years, supposedly. It does crank. See if it pulls any fuel up and if the accelerator pump works. I'm gonna go no. She's dying a little bit. All right, let's get under the hood, put our battery in. So, coming under the hood, way back Ooh. in there, we have one leaky 460. That's a lot of motor right there. We have various oils in a funnel. That's good. Dry. It looks clean though, so it looks like we probably just rusted out a line somewhere. We'll just have to find that and replace it. DuraSpark ignition system. There's a four barrel holly hidden under there. All right, let's get a battery, pop the dog house off, get some brake clean, see if this thing comes to life. I spilled it all over the place, so don't worry, it's not a leak. Or it is, and we just won't be able to tell because we think it's not. Drive line's got 75,000 on it, according to the odometer. No idea if that's rolled over. I doubt it. Campers usually don't, because the bodies usually do this before that happens. Okay. Let's get for the beans. She has adhered herself to the uh, carpet here. Gosh! Alright, well, got the dog house off now. Am I hooked on? Like hooked a band-aid. Just do it <laughs> I just don't want to rip anything. Oh, this oh, hurts. Oh, 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 oh. We're gonna dump out all this. Stuff. I just go straight back, man. I'm trying. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were trying to go out the door. No, I'm just trying to get her out. Okay. Yeah. That's our big ass 460. That's a lot of motor. This should come out. He said it doesn't run unless you have to choke all the way in, but that's a vacuum choke. You can't control that. So, what does this lever do? Confusion. Now I'm just really confused. Might open up. Uh, might open up your vent for your feet. Oh yeah, that's definitely what it does. It doesn't run unless you open the vent. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Let's let's try it. I'm gonna go and say we are missing spark. Let me just check quick. From the driver's seat, if we have spark. Find something not too rusty. 
We got spark. Just needs more fuel. We must need more fuel. I mean, that's a that's a lot of motor we're trying to crank. All right, a little more brake clean. Let's try it again. More fuel. Damn, does she want brake clean? I don't say it's running, but I don't see fuel yet. Can anyone see that uh, fuel filter? I can see it. Oh, it runs just cherry. <laughs> that fuel coming up through it is dirty, man. Is it? Oh, it's like it's like red colored rust, dirty, man. Actually, you might just be looking at the filter. Really? Because yeah. where I'm seeing, I can see a level. Like where, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty it's, gross. It's pretty bad. I can't. All right, let's see when we do this. Oh, yeah, bad. I'm going to assume we don't have an accelerator pump. We don't. It's seized. Smells. That's, that's good enough to make it to Kansas City. Not in this state, but we can make it good enough. Let's uh, let's put this vacuum line. I could put my finger Ow. over it. Yeah, you want to just be the, yep. uh, the the enrichment modulator. Says we got a quarter tank of fuel, and judging by the look of that, oh, actually, you know what? It cleaned up pretty good. Yeah, it's not looking too. I'm bad not now. too scared to run that past the valves now. So we got a running motor. Uh, definitely need an accelerator pump. Probably needs uh, power valves. Those are probably junk, or else it's gonna be too lean up top when we're trying to haul with it. And it needs brakes fix, and then maybe just clean out a little bit. Not as bad as I thought though. So I would sleep in this, like as it is right now. Well, you're you. I am me. I'd sleep in it if I had like different blankets. I mean, the mullet's gone, but I'm still the greasy, Crazy greasy bastard. dirt ball I was before. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Do we have any like lights? Lights? Like headlights, blinkers. Oh, oh. yeah, we should try that. Alright. Ready, Jesse? Ready? You have headlights. Oh, there it's working. No left. We can only make right turns all the way to Kansas City. <laughs> Nothing at all? Nothing at all. Uh, coming out. Nope. Now? Nope. Alright, we have our list of things uh, brakes, carb, taillights. Let's dig into it, see if we can get this thing done today. Get the old. 
Wasp Removal 3000, aka Brake Clean. This stuff's great for everything. And then you just be like, DIE YOU CHEEKY BASTARD! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I thought that was- Oh, you scared me so bad! <laughs> Big wasp! This stuff pretty much kills them on contact, which is great, because then you don't really have to worry about them anymore. I killed that guy. Yeah. Die. Little, little butthole. You know what, there's actually one thing we need to check. What's that? The roof. I'll do it. We need to make sure we can sit up there to watch the race. If I fall through, uh, tell my mom I love her. I'm not sure where to be. Should I, I don't think you'll inside die. Inside for when he falls through, or should I just be out here? When he suddenly just goes, <laughs> boop! <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's fine, boys. Ooh, maybe. Oh, yeah, I should probably tell you. If, uh, if you're ever on a roof like this, you want to step kind of where there's uh, screws and stuff, and then avoid the ridges, because that's how you get a camper to leak. Is if you step on those ridges. One well, thing's for sure, you look pretty majestic up there. Thank you, thank you. Now I, I just. I was gonna say mullet in the wind, but I, then I remembered. God damn it. For those who don't know, Golden Rust and Bust had a huge, beautiful mullet, and he had to shave his mullet and mustache to go apply for a job to be a police officer. Didn't get the job, still lost the mullet. <laughs> Oof! If anyone's looking to hire a cop, here you go, oh, you know? God. I'm still crying about it a little bit. I was sad. The day I cut it off, I was like, hello, darkness, my old friend. All right, let's start digging into this thing. Who wants to tackle what? Oh, Do you want to find our brake leak? I can pop our carb off. Just tackle yeah. Kevin. We'll be entertaining. So we're tackling Jesse. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, the last person who crawled under here died too, so... <laughs> <laughs> There's so many leaves. All right. Come with me, and you'll see that the power valve's bad. Kevin, what are you doing? I'm taking the carburetor off. Oh, hang on, John. So what we're gonna do is John's gonna go all the way down, and then do tiny little pumps. Because if you see right down in there, which you probably can't. But there's Actually, yes. a hole in the back, and you can see a bubble in it. And when he oscillates, he's going to get that bubble out. There they go. You can do full pumps too, but sometimes this is just a little quicker to help bleed that back end right there. There's a cow in there. You hear that? So he's going to do that until the bubbles stop, and then we can figure out where our leak is, hopefully. Or we'll just have working brakes, which is highly unlikely. But hey, I can dream. Boop. Bink. There's a vacuum leak. So this right here is why you don't use rubber caps if you can avoid it. You get nylon ones or else these will start snapping and then you'll have vacuum leaks you literally can't see because it's a camper. A fisherman, a jerk on one end, waiting for a jerk on the other end. <laughs> Alright, let's rebuild this vehicle's carburetor inside the vehicle. I think that's just the coolest damn thing. You want to whip up some lunch while we're at it, man? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll get right on that. We'll just get over here. and I don't think our gas actually works to the stoves. So. I don't think it's on. Hmm. And we're not turning it on here. We're, <laughs> we're in a nice open field. Yeah, where if it explodes, you know, it's fine. Yeah, it doesn't burn down anyone's house. There we go. Alright, let's give our needle and seat a test. I'm actually not too happy with that. We might just need to adjust it though. Seems to be high. Uh, power valve actually seems okay. Like, that seems to move just fine. If these, I mean, it, and it could be already getting heavy, but what'll happen is if you watch an O2 gauge sometimes on cars you really care about. It'll come in like a pound or two late, sorry, an inch or two late on the mercury. So what the power valve does here is this is a supplementary enrichment circuit for the carburetor. All your carb events are compounding. So you have basically a ladder of fuel input into an engine and it's all based off of air speed and throttle position. You start out on just your idle screws. These guys right here are what determine your idle mixture. Sometimes you'll have a four corner carb where there'll be some back here too. We do have dual metering plates, so I might have a power valve in the rear I need to check. So while you're sitting here idling, 
The only thing affecting the amount of fuel you're putting in, assuming everything's working correct, is your mixture screws. Uh, assuming stuff's not working correct, if it's running really rough and rich and puffing black smoke, or if any time that you turn those screws all the way in and close them and it runs better, you have a power valve that's bad and leaking fuel into the engine. Long story short, you're starting out at idle with those mixture screws. You are now going to start stepping into the throttle. You are now on your primary jets, which are these guys right here. These meter the cruising uh, amount of fuel, or the amount of fuel through these primary barrels. So that's the second rung of the ladder. Now you smack the gas open, and your accelerator pump, which is also when you're cruising, it's still pumping, but in this situation you smack the gas open and your accelerator pump's gonna throw a mechanical shot of fuel in to make up for the fact that the airspeed is not there to pull from the Venturis yet. So this can be metered or adjusted with this cam right here. It's kind of hard to see, but there's this opaque looking piece of plastic right here. The cam drives this rod, so as it comes open, it pushes this down and it moves your accelerator pump. You can change that cam to different sizes to change how much fuel is put in. So throughout this whole ladder, the accelerator pump's kind of there for the first three rungs. Speaking of, that third rung is you're cruising down the road and you lean into it a little bit, but you're not wide open. You need a little more power to get around the car or whatever. You're going to step on the throttle and your vacuum gauge, which corresponds inversely to your foot feed. The more throttle, the less vacuum, because I mean, imagine you take a vacuum hose on a vacuum cleaner and you plug it with your hand. That line is now full of vacuum, but you take your hand off. Now there's air rushing through and there's no longer a vacuum in that tube. Same thing with an engine. Engine is a vacuum cleaner, that's your hand. No vacuum, lots of vacuum. So that's why when you see a vacuum gauge, it goes to zero at wide open. And that's what meters all your fuel events in a carburetor. As you put your foot into it, less and less vacuum is in the engine, and that controls different things in here, being the third rung of our fuel ladder, the power valve. When the engine's running, this thing is pulled shut and held by high vacuum. And then as you start to increase the uh, throttle and that vacuum level comes below whatever rating is on this, which is probably a six and a half. So at six and a half inches of mercury and lower, the power valve comes open and allows extra fuel to get in behind these primary jets. So now it effectively increases the size of your primaries for when you're leaning into the throttle pretty good where the air speed's not enough to pull enough fuel and needs, needs a little more than what the primaries can supply. So that power valve is the enrichment circuit. So now you're trying to pass this guy in the road and you really want to get around him and you put your foot on the floor. Transmission's going to kick down a gear, accelerator pump gives it everything it's got, your power valve's wide open, your, sec your primaries are flowing fuel, everything's doing everything it can, and the air speed through here is going to start getting really high. At this point, there is what's called a Venturi vacuum, which is plumbed straight over into this canister. This is your secondary canister, and there's a spring in here that holds these secondaries closed, and you can change that spring weight. We usually just throw a black spring in for pretty much anything we're doing. Have those secondaries come in later. You're not trying to race. Everyone thinks they're a race car. No one's a race car. Unless you're putting yourself on a trailer and taking it to a track and then putting it back at home on the trailer, you're not a race car. So don't buy race carbs. Air speed's getting high. The Venturi vacuum signal is rising enough to override the diaphragm in this and it's going to pull that spring closed and pull that diaphragm up and open your secondaries. At this point there's a set of these right here on this metering block or in the rear of the carb. And that is your fourth and final rung of the ladder, your secondary jets. So there. Just remember when you're tuning a carburetor and you're using a vacuum gauge in an O2 gauge, the vacuum gauge is a map of what's happening inside of your carburetor depending on the vacuum level, be it power valve open, secondaries open, blah blah blah. And the O2 gauge is going to show you what events are making what changes. So if you're sitting there at idle and it's too lean, change your primary screws. If you're driving down the road and it's too lean or too rich, change your, your primary jets. If you're leaning into it and it gets lean and then rich and you want it to be lean earlier, change the timing of your power valve by changing the power valve value. If you're all the way wide open and you don't have enough fuel or you have too much, change your secondaries. 
Long story short, carburetors are a ladder that compound. Each event adds more fuel than the last one had, and they are distinctly timed, and an O2 gauge and a vacuum gauge next to each other will show you when what is happening. This is not hard. Anyone can do this. Sit down, learn about it, think. Don't just go off what someone told you, cross-reference everything, ask questions, and figure it out. Anyone can tune a carburetor, I promise you. With that, I'm going to end my monologue, put a new seal on here, throw a new uh, accelerator pump in that bowl, and we'll be good to go. God damn. God <laughs> damn. That was Kevin, and welcome to his TED Talk. All right. Hold accelerator pump. New accelerator pump. Nothing happens. Goodness happens. Wow. Let's put that in. Rip around town in a camper with no brakes. Don't drink and drive, kids. Smart. We drink a lot of beer, but we do not drink and drive. So, removing this, you can actually see how much rust was in there. And not only that, when it dumped all over my hands, most of the rust came out. So that's that's no good. I'm glad we're replacing this. And this uh, filter here is actually supposed to be attached up there. But now it's just kind of like floating around, doing its own thing. It's a big old Morocco. So, uh, yeah, that's done. Um, we're going to just put our new one on here. So this is inside. I'm just going to put that there. And then I'm pretty sure we're going to put on a different hose on the other side. All right. Got our bottom gasket made. I cut out one of these to better fit this probably unnecessary adapter, but it kind of gives a better mating plane. So we're going to run it. Get this bastard on. And then finally, this one. And now, the carburetor. Ugh. Well, that's all it takes. We'll just bolt that on, fire this back up, and see how it runs. Somewhere in the brakes is very unhappy. They were stuck and then they came unstuck, and the whole light, like the brake light was on the whole time, and I didn't have pedal at all. So we don't have brakes. Right now we're re bleeding the brakes, and uh, we're going to do a few pumps and see if we get a firm brake pedal. So, all right, you ready back there? Yep. Oh. Down. It's down. Oh, we had the valve closed. Oh, yeah. Down. Up. Down. Up. How's it feel?
deal. It's feeling like a break. Hell yeah. Hey, guess what else? What? I just found our electrical issue. Yeah? It melted on the exhaust. Oh, <laughs> shit. We're smart. We got it fixed. We'll just floor it, and the brakes being stuck will fix themselves. Yeah, oh, that's fine. We got 460 inches of you up there. <laughs> <laughs> Sincerely up to the brakes. All right, do another brake check. So the brakes operate, uh, the pedal feels a thousand times better, that's good. Um, they also operate still way too well where they're just eh, somewhere, so we'll get to that. Those will free up, I'm not too worried about that. Let's get some wire and some splices and crawl under there and splice that burnt section of wire. And then we'll have brakes, lights, and that's about it. Go get gas and see how far before we die on the side of the road. Or die in a fire on the side of the road. Or just die. Or just die. Period. We went underneath and rewired some wires that were burnt up. No idea if they actually fixed it. Took our housing off. Turns out our bulbs are, no, oh, yeah, that. Our bulbs are just so corroded. Brakes? Hey! -hey! So the thing is, these have springs on the pins, and those springs rust. And then once you get the bulb out, there's no getting a new one back in because the contacts aren't as worn. So our best hope is to actually just try to get these to work. So we got running lights, but when the running lights are on, everything else is off. It's one of those situations, everything's broken, whatever. We're gonna fire this up, take it for a lap around the block, see what else we might have to get from O'Reilly's before they close in a half hour and go pick up some trailer lights to wire on the back of this thing. Let's take it for a rip. <laughs> At this point we parked for a bit to let our brakes cool, John cleaned the windshield, and I was able to find one consistently working bulb in the back so I wired a couple trailer lights all to the right side. After this we did a couple laps around the block to slowly unstick those frozen brakes and then went to Casey's to get gas before finally going on our last test drive before leaving town. <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> the bathroom door open. I got an officer. We're gonna see someone pooping. <laughs> All right, everything seems to be like really good. So we're gonna pack up the truck, head over to our buddy Ron's place. Where we're gonna leave this for the week, and then we'll be back 
Friday, throw all our coolers in and head straight to Kansas City as it sits. Hopefully it still works by that point. All right, off into the sunset, except for the sunsets over there. This is what I meant by you can see where the carburetor is in its vent via the uh, vacuum gauge. That's power valves open, power valves closed. Power valves open, power valves closed, right? There is the power valve. So yeah, get you one of them in an O2 gauge and you can dial stuff in. All right, I'm not gonna listen to that thing bang the goddamn center. Is that what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> Charge! Joust! We're jousting now, boys! <laughs> Charge! <laughs> are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? I swear to God, I'm gonna kill you. Are we there yet? <laughs> I, will, I will choose a pole and end us both. <laughs> this thing drives so good. It holds its line down the road. Fix that exhaust leak, it'd be dead silent. This, this is what I wanted. This is what I wanted to not happen. I wanted to hate this. I wanted it to die and make us sad. But no, it's it's running great. It drives fantastic. We don't even need a second car. Yeah, I'm strongly considering not taking a truck with us and just piling everyone in this and driving straight to Kansas City. If we die, we die. Made it all, Ciola, bud. We made it. Oh, we got to race Gio at the light. That thing got a hemi? I think so. <laughs> Bring it on! Son. Yeah, we spun the tires, man. That wasn't that. Nah, that was us. That was us, yeah. Yeah, we spun them so hard, we just stayed at the light. Figured out what that light was for. Dash lights don't work, but they do now. <laughs> Onward. It's a lot of dust. I can't breathe very well anymore. <laughs> We made it though. We are freaking here. We're gonna go park this down at Ron's and be back in a few days with coolers full of meat and beer. Sounds good to me. Let's do it. All right, and with that, we're gonna go home and pack all of our stuff to bring and throw in this thing. We're leaving it down here because it would be an unnecessary two hours to drive north when this is right on 35. Plus, we have no room. So thank you very much to Ron for letting us let this thing sit here for a week. We will be back in about five days. It's been a week. Today's the day. We wanted to be here at about 1 p.m., but instead we're here at about 6 p.m. The stuff happens. And the sun is dropping. So we are gonna hop in this thing, see if it fires up. It has not been touched at all. It is exactly where we parked it when we were last year. And cannonball this thing straight to Kansas City Speedway with nothing but a beer stop in between. <laughs> And probably about eight gas stops, but let's see if she comes back to life. Oh, oh, easy, easy. She's gonna fires off and idles. What? Why do you gotta be so good? I'm supposed to be getting rid of you. Right now, our potential goal is to just take it down there and sell it. Come back in the truck since we're we're going to be taking a second truck behind us now because we're running. So so, and people have to be back Monday. So safety precaution, we'll have a trail vehicle, but the story still stands to the camper. Look at that, it's just sitting there. Well, the stairs still work. Seems legit. Mmm, <laughs> smells worse. Just as ugly as we left it. What do you think? Uh, this is your home for the next three days. Uh, looks like some red shields were left in here from the 60s, 70s era. This oh no, that was from me last weekend. <laughs> that's, from, <laughs> that's from Saturday this era. Is, this is impressive. Uh, you do fit in here. I never thought of that. I never thought of that either. This is, this is going to be an awesome couple days. Well, let's saddle up and head south. I didn't know if this was what this was at first. I thought it was a bunch of turds, but it's actually, I love bacon. <laughs> well, we'll see you around, sir. Good luck. Get out of my yard. Okay. Are you ready for the Bushy McBush race? I am Mick ready for the Bushy McBush race. Cowboy John is ready to roll. Let's do it. Oh, right out of the hole. Just, just peachy. Thanks, Ron.
And with that, we took one last look at the odometer before putting it to the floor to try to make up some time. Oh, oh boy! It's like a goddamn rally car! Oh, oh yeah. yeah! Wait till I shift in the maximum over danger! <laughs> It wasn't long before we realized that making up for lost time wasn't really possible in a huge camper and that gravel roads weren't the best. Running out of clean air inside, we made a break for the interstate. You ever looked down the tunnel of death before? Uh, there it is right there. Well actually, is that a trick question? I feel like I have a couple times. Yeah, we've done a few videos <laughs> together. <laughs> Alright, let's see if some bitch will survive the interstate. Despite weighing as much as an F-350 with a house strapped to it, the camper did surprisingly well on the interstate. And the cool part was we got to see every gas station between here and Kansas. All right, time to pull off and get gas already. We got like 20 miles. We're not gonna run it below a quarter tank. So we're gonna just keep refilling, but it does suck it down that fast. That was an eighth of a tank from Ron's house. Fifteen gallons later, we were back on the road and heading south. Welcome to the rice fields, mother <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't too long at all before we had punched into the top of Missouri and were making good time down the interstate. The camper was running surprisingly well and the miles were rolling up at about the same rate the gas was going down. Every time, we gotta get it every time. Yeah. Running good, temps are good, pressure's good, chug and fuel, and heading south. We got another 130 miles to go. We'll be there once it's thoroughly dark. Now I've driven tons of vehicles on road trips across the U.S., but there was something a little special about driving an old gurgly camper into the sunset on the way to a NASCAR race. It just felt right. All right, supposedly the track closes in 30 minutes. I don't know if we're gonna get in, but we just did our entire beer run and bought as much bush light as humanly possible. So let's go to a NASCAR race, hopefully. Keep her to the wood! Let's get her! There she is! That's the Kansas City Speedway. Yeehaw! Well, when we made it to the speedway. The wrong one. It was the wrong goddamn speedway. <laughs> this is a dirt track. Google brought us to a random dirt track, late side speedway. Ugh. Oh. It's an adventure. In other news, our alternator's being a little goofy as you can see, so that's fun. I'm sure we can make it 10 minutes. There we go. That looks more like the Kansas City Speedway. Infield, Terrace, Martinsville, this is We just magically found the right one. Hell yeah. These guys are about to be like, what the hell just pulled up? Upon arriving, we asked one of the gate guards if we were definitely the worst camper he had seen pulled in that day. He claimed we were not, but I'm totally calling BS because I saw what was in that infield and we proudly took that trophy home. No, we had one get towed in on uh, an actual tow truck and then we had another one that literally looked like they pulled it out of the field just for this. That's what oh, we did. Oh, no, nice. like it was dirt covered more than you know, grass oh. rust. It must not have driven as far. Ours blew off. Damn, so we're not the shittiest RV here. No. Damn it. Yeah, but you definitely replaced the top three. <laughs> we actually made it to the Kansas City Speedway in our shitty camper, which apparently is not the shittiest, so we gotta meet some other people that apparently have a shittier camper. <laughs> Look at that! How cool is that? Well, you can't see a damn thing, and it's kind of running like crap now. <laughs> Our voltage is all over the place. But the some bitch made it. Look at that. Kansas City Speedway. We're gonna drink some beers and we'll catch up with you guys in the morning. We can see what's going on. Figured we should probably actually clean the camper for the first time and get everyone's housing situations for the night set up before we start drinking bush lights.
I do have the right hat on now though. Woohoo! The hot dog buns where the mice can get them, as is tradition. Circle template. Oh shit! What you got? Vehicle registration, or the, the recreational vehicle data card. Oh. Like the original data card. Yeah, 1977. It's got like every time that it was uh, redone, so like the furnace and the oven and everything. Oh, they're, they're repaired or whatever? Yeah. More trash. Hey! Oh, hey, oh, hey now, hold on! Alright, John, you cooking supper? Yeah, Funyuns. Sour Patch Kids. Cookies. I had, I had gummy worms, but I ate them. All. That is a goddamn gourmet meal right there. We're eating good tonight, boys. <laughs> Thanks That's... for cooking, John. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, boys. <laughs> you put the right amount of sun in these chips, too, by the way. <laughs> That's a good job. All right, let's have ourselves a hydration session, and we'll see you when it's time for take a nap. Hopefully not a dirt nap. We're going to stay away from that. Yeah. As much as possible. Yeah. Safety first, kids. So I've decided I'm not going to sleep inside the camper. Uh, instead, I think I'm going to sleep up there. I'd be fine. You'll be fine. Got my uh, bed set up here. I got the good old uh, camper pillow because I forgot mine. And uh, I'm going to sleep underneath the stars tonight, I think. So in the morning, I can wake up and see Kansas City Speedway in all its glory. It's going to be great. You got a safe word this time? Oh, safe word for tonight. I'm gonna I'm keep peaches. Peaches? Peaches is always. Peaches my and turns. All right. Well, always. All right. Good night, John. Good night. We'll see you around. Shit, that might have been one chance for Sheldon. <laughs> <laughs> so, slept up here on the roof last night. It wasn't that bad. It was a little, just a little bit chilly, but, gosh, I mean got the sun rising that's not the cool part that's not the cool part this is what made everything 100% worth it hold on I watched the sunrise on Kansas City Speedway that right there that view was awesome that was the best view morning good morning Time for breakfast Whoa, breakfast I'm just finishing up breakfast Oh, I, think it's, I think it's I think it's seven o'clock in the morning. Is it really? I think it's literally seven. It is seven oh five. Oh, I, I guess I'll brush my teeth with this bush. <laughs> it's fine. I think we're the only people awake. <laughs> the camper stinks too bad to sleep. <laughs> Let's see what infields are about. Now that we can actually see what's going on. That's oh. upside down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hang our flag and yell rebelly at each other. I'm down. Oh, hell yes. This is freaking nuts. This is like relatively cheap, too. I think we paid $800 to get the camper in for four days. It's like Thursday afternoon to Monday at noon. 800 bucks. It was like $115 or $150 a head. Get out here. Enjoy some racing. Enjoy some social events. After some breakfast beer, we were quite hungry, so we grilled up some bacon and then settled in to watch some morning practice laps. Breakfast! This of course woke everyone else up so they started coming out of our trailers and we began to make new friends and decided it's time to put up our flag. Which only lasted about 6 seconds because a golf cart pulled up informing us that the first race of the day was starting. Alright so right now they're firing up the Dutch Boy 150. This is the, uh, the I think it was the Arcan race. Basically it's an amateur series they're going to run a 150 mile which I think is a 70 lap or something? Yeah. Race. And then tonight we're going to have a truck series in the in the night, I guess. Truck series, night series. Yeah, this truck, afternoon. Truck night It's at 6 p.m., so night. I don't know how it's supposed to be dark at 6. We've been drinking since 7. We don't know what's going on anymore. Yeah. <laughs> 
After watching a quick tow truck race, the Arcan series kicked things off and cars started to turn around us faster and faster and we could put beers down. Would not suggest standing on a roof spinning in circles while drinking, by the way. Probably not a good idea. Ben just went inside to make a drink. You know what to do. <laughs> Your winner, ladies and gentlemen, is Ty Gibbs. Keep an eye on that name. You're gonna see it again, that kid can drive. All right, now we have a quick hydration session. Until I don't think the, we ever stopped our last hydration we session. We continue the hydration <laughs> session until the uh, 6 p.m. truck race. As soon as the race was complete, we got our flags back up and then set to work on trying to sell the camper so we didn't have to drive it home. Okay, we got some interested customers. Let's see if we can sell the camper. What do you guys think? You, you guys want to buy a camper? We're, buy. We're thinking about it, yes. Well, I'll tell you what. They told me the air conditioning works like a son of a gun. <laughs> We're not brave enough to plug it in, but they also told me it doesn't leak, and that's a lie. So. <laughs> at this point, we began to really enjoy our weekend off at the Speedway and had ourselves a good four or five hours of hydration session. Not everyone made it, though. I don't know what happened. But John has died. And he's praying about it. Heck, either way, it is time for the truck series. Let's kick this thing off. Ready to see some trucks go around? Yes, let's let these trucks rip. Hell yeah. It's like this grill is going to rip some meat. Can I say that? As you can tell, the beer's flowing, so it's time to make new friends. Everybody meet Bill. No. This is Bill. He's our neighbor, and he's awesome. He's the best. <laughs> nope. It's also time for me to forget what setting my camera's on. I have to say this is the first human revival we've ever filmed, but I witnessed one that day. John came back to life. One of our neighbors had this really tall, kick-ass platform they let us use to watch the race. And it was really neat to watch the sun go down while trucks were ripping circles around you. If you saw the race, you know that Kyle Busch unfortunately won it, but I think the real winner that night was John, who got back on his feet, at least for a little bit. Hey John, how's it going? Oh, just living life. It's good to join us for the last oh, lap. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think, Bill? I'm Kyle Busch. <laughs> Kyle Busch. <Bush. laughs> unfortunately for us, Kyle Busch won. But hey, you can't, Boo. you can't win them all. This is my frowny face. Well, Johnny he has probably so can. Far, but so far. All right, it's time for a hydration session. Woo! We'll see you guys tomorrow for the actual cup race. Finally. The race. The what? Brad. Oh, yeah. The Kevin Harvick race. Oh. Burn. Ooh. I'm going to cut there before anyone says anything. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. I think the truck race ended about five hours ago. It did. There you go, Ben. Nope. Eh, no. Well, maybe. John's already He's got planning. five hours of sleep over all the rest of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, hey, listen, you two. Wait a minute. Mike! Hey! What? Holy shit. Mike, tell him goodnight. We'll see you in the morning. Well, I... No, not him. The the 500,000 people watching. Well, let me tell you something. What's you going to tell us, Mike? Put him back down on the couch. God, hold on. Get his feet up here, really. Yeah, you nice. gotta, you gotta tuck yeah. me in, Dad. <laughs> really nice. Yeah, tuck me in, Daddy. Yeah. Tuck me in, Daddy. Really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, tuck me in, Dad. All right. <laughs> I'll sleep on top. Can I wear this hat tonight? Sleep. I'm gonna wear the hat. All right. I'm I'm gonna, you gotta wear it straight. Gotta wear it straight. Hold on. 
Is that backwards? Yeah, it's so yeah, sweat stained, I can't I'll tell which way is which. Yeah, Let's go. <laughs> Alright, John. We are either going to or not going to wake you up. I'll hold down the floor. I'll hold down the floor. Alright, don't let anyone steal the camper, but if, you, if <sighs> anyone think... wants to sell it, oh, I want you to sell oh. it to them. Oh, bet. Alright, hey, we'll see you in a couple hours, eh? Yeah. Goddamn NASCAR. Come and get you some, kids. Merry Christmas, shitter's full. <laughs> well, we survived again. Today is the cup race. We're gonna grill up some breakfast. I'm probably not gonna consume any beer halls today, so I can drive home. We'll uh, see you when the cup race starts. One of them slow mornings. McBush race 400. We got our money on John. Oh, Harvick. Harvick. Sure. Harvick. 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 Yep. One thing about watching NASCAR live is you just get those things you don't see on TV. Like the dude dressed as Elvis two campers over. This guy was awesome. About a hundred laps into this race, I realized something. I realized I'd found something at this NASCAR track. It was my childhood, but in an adult form. I grew up watching NASCAR, but moved away from the sport as the Earnhardts left the sport, and the cars changed, and I got more busy in life and lost free weekends. But back at that track, I realized that it was all still there. I just needed to go back. And what better way to go than in a camper that costs as much as your infield tickets? By the end of the race, John turned into a muscular tomato. Supposedly, we wound up on the Fox TV broadcast, and unfortunately, Kyle Busch won again. Ben was so upset by this, he fell asleep in his chair, so me and his brothers decided to wake him up. By the end of the weekend, we had drinking so much beer, met so many new friends, had so much great food, and saw so many great races that we cannot wait to go back in October. So if you guys are there in October, keep a lookout for some shitty camper, because you'll see us. Anyway, at this point, it was time to pack up and make tracks north. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Everyone's Later. packing up and rolling out. Now it's our turn. You guys ready to roll home? I, I'll think about it, but yeah, sure, if you're making me. <laughs> I don't want to go home yet. <laughs> Me neither. Back to the land of responsibilities. So with that, we hopped in the camper, made sure to nail the apexes on the way out of the track, and put the pedal down for a 250 mile drive home. The camper ran absolutely flawless all the way home. I stuck the cruise at 65 and we made some time and got home somewhere around 12.30 that night. There it is, sir. By God, we're gonna make it. That's the fabled 111. That's home. We're marking at 76,200 miles. And I want to say four or 500 mile road trip. There she be. 111. Yeehaw! So there it is. That is our camper revival road trip. We pulled the 77, I think it's essentially an E350, out of a driveway where it had been sitting for a number of years and hadn't really probably been on a trip and if I had to guess, eight or 10 years and drove it 500 miles down to Kansas City and back with basically no issues. I say basically because when we brought it the three miles from Ben's house to the shop, the heater cord blew out. So, whoo man, we cut that one close. Either way, I'm gonna go through, pull all of our stuff out, vacuum this sucker up, wash it down just the littlest bit and throw it on Marketplace to get it the hell out of here because I don't have room. And there's another race in October where we wanna do this again. So we're going to have to find ourselves a different camper. If you guys enjoyed this, let us know down in the comments. 
so that I know if this is something you want to see again, we'll definitely get a new camper for next October. Big thanks to NASCAR and Kansas City Speedway for putting on such a great show. Uh, watching NASCAR on TV is honestly ruined for me because the infield was way more fun. <laughs> like that was an absolute blast. Definitely something you guys should try to check out. With all this being said, make sure you do something even easier than that and support your local racetracks to keep racing in our country alive and well for the next generation. I've got some work to do to get this thing out of my yard, so I will see you guys right here next week on Junkyard Digs. Subscribe to Junkyard Mook, all of our friends, Golden Rush and Bus. We'll see you in a few days. Peace. I wonder if there's any bush light left in there.